Part 95 changes for CB, GMRS, FRS, and the multi-use radio service included removing information about fines and penalties. Because the overarching United States Code already details sanctions the FCC can take against errant radio operators. The transmission of false distress signals and station identification also were removed because the United States Code already addresses these issues too. Other actions include removing Roger beeps from being allowed on CB channels, removing GMRS antenna heights because other FCC and aviation rules cover it, not requiring paper licenses for amateur radio operators because they are now downloaded online, and some updates on the regions that volunteer examiner coordinators can serve in giving online license exams. It is expected that other rule cleanups will come in 2026 as the FCC continues to streamline regulations. Since we reported on these moves, the FCC report and order was published in the Federal Registry. Unless valid objections are raised before January 2, 2026, the rules will be deleted on February 10, 2026. Carr also highlighted the FCC's move to end diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, as well as the FCC's reversal of an expansion to the E-Rate program to fund school bus Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi hotspots. One of the top stories we covered in 2025 was a proposal to add VHF low frequencies in the 30 through 50 megahertz range for use by family radio service users and general mobile radio service licensee. The proposal asks that the Federal Communications Commission reallocate underused frequencies to allow FRS and GMRS growth on frequencies that would offer farther range in some areas. National Capital Communications LLC also known as Mid-Atlantic REACT in Washington, formally requested the FCC reallocate a series of outdated and abandoned frequencies to enhance GMRS and FRS capability. The petition was submitted by Michael C. Trahos, KAB7046, a longtime GMRS licensee who is a physician. He is also a general class ham with a call sign of KB4PGC and has other FCC licenses too. The petition was filed in response to FCC rulemaking efforts and aligned with President Trump's executive orders promoting deregulation and efficient government operations. The request highlighted a growing need for longer-range, publicly accessible communications tools in the face of increasingly severe natural disasters.